You're watching BBC Newsroom Live, it's 11am. These are the main stories this morning. After years of delays and cancellations, a decision is expected over the future of the Northern Rail franchise. It's late every day, uh, the, half of them don't turn up. Some days you just can't get on and it's, it's shocking. And like when it comes to summer, people are fainting on the trains as well because it's so overcrowded and hot. Good morning, welcome to BBC Newsroom Live, I'm Joanna Gosling. A decision on the future of the north of England's biggest rail operator, Northern, is expected to be made today. The government could nationalise the network after it struggled to provide a reliable service for passengers. Tim Muffet reports. Delays, overcrowding and cancellations. It is a joke. Northern is one of the biggest rail franchises in Britain but it's been in trouble for some time. This lack of service is just not acceptable. This is the 0748 service from Nottingley to Leeds. It's really unreliable. Um, it's late every day. Uh, the half of them don't turn up. Yeah, some, some days you just can't get on and it's, it's shocking. And like when it comes to summer, people are fainting on the trains as well because it's so overcrowded and hot. This line is on one of the worst performing parts of the Northern Network. Almost two-thirds of services run late, according to the most recent statistics. Earlier this month, Transport Secretary Grant Chaps warned Northern its service was unacceptable and that it could lose its franchise. A further announcement on Northern's future is believed to be imminent. Trains are frequently late, they're frequently overcrowded, there's cancellations at the last minute, somebody else maybe need, does need a turn to see if they can improve it. It's poor, it is, but will anybody else do any better? God knows. The franchise covers a huge commuter network from the Midlands to Northumberland, from Lancashire to East Yorkshire. More than 100 million journeys were made last year. Northern says many of its problems have been beyond its control, such as delays to the electrification of track. But a new timetable introduction in May 2018 went badly. Since December of that year, only around a half of Northern trains have arrived on time. I just find, find that I tend to work from home quite a bit, just to avoid, to avoid the commute. For many commuters, changes to the way these trains are run can't come soon enough. Well, the independent rail consultant Irina Teleki joins me now. Hello, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Um, what are your thoughts? Would it be the right thing to take Northern Rail back into public ownership? I think that's probably inevitably where we're heading, uh, given all the messages that have been coming out from the government. Um, it may be the right thing to do, but I think the important thing is whatever happens, uh, there aren't going to be any improvements in the short term. And how bad has the franchise been? I think the franchise has been beset by uh, a, a range of problems. Um, Northern have said that a lot of them are out of their control and that's certainly true with uh, infrastructure being, infrastructure improvements being delayed uh, but they've also had a series of uh, quite damaging strikes um, and their new rolling stock is uh, being delivered late. Um, there's huge, there are huge problems of capacity right across the north um, so 
almost whatever Northern does, in the absence of significant investment in the North, anyone would struggle to run a reliable service of the kind that passengers want to see. So how would taking it back into public ownership actually change anything? Well, I think it's important to note that uh, Arriva, who run the franchise, are actually running out of money. Uh, they are under contractual obligations to the government uh, for a certain amount of subsidy. Uh, they have been using their own money to, in effect, prop up the franchise uh, financially and they will run out of money. So the franchise is financially unsustainable. In terms, sorry, will, I mean, I understand that, but in terms of users seeing an improvement, what will change? I, I think it's very difficult to say that anything will change in the short term. Um, and it may be, it may well be that even if the franchise is taken into public ownership um, in the short term, there will continue to be problems. Some of those problems will be alleviated when the new fleet is in place. But as I said before, the North needs significant infrastructure investment to give passengers the frequent and reliable service that they want. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. We're expecting that decision a little bit later. Hello everyone, this is Afternoon Live, I'm Simon McCoy. In the last hour it's been announced that the struggling rail operator Northern is to lose its franchise and will be nationalised in March. The service, which is run by Arriva, has been accused of allowing unacceptable delays across its network. Northern connects towns and cities like Preston and Blackburn in the west to places like York and Hull in the east via the big cities of Manchester and Leeds. Well, in a statement just released, Northern's owner, Arriva, has apologised to passengers and said it understood the government's decision. Our correspondent, Danny Savage, is in Leeds for us now. Danny. Simon, this is Leeds, the busiest station in the north of England. Hundreds and hundreds of services operated by Northern originate from this station and pass through it as well throughout the day, carrying thousands of passengers. Now what's happened now over the last year and a half or so since the timetable fiasco of May 2018 is that passengers have got increasingly frustrated by delayed trains, cancelled services and overcrowding. Well the government has finally had enough of this and they're bringing the company into public ownership and stripping them of their franchise. In the last hour Grant Shapps, the Transport Secretary, says that passengers have lost faith and that they deserve better. And he's also made this statement in the last moments, in the last few moments. The first thing they've ordered is a you know, deep clean of the, of the trains. Uh, get a proper cleaning rotor in place so people can actually get on clean trains. Um, get the Sunday rotor sorted out so the trains run. Uh, and actually, frankly, some of the, I know some of the facilities for the, for the staff, literally for the train drivers, are in terrible um, state. So I've asked them to sort those sort of things out so that people are able to you know, come to a decent place of work as well. Um, so I think there's all manner of things to, to do. And within the, the 100 days, I want them both to do the short term things that they can do now uh, but also the plan for the uh, longer term which eventually this is not the final state um, of this the whole of the rail network is too complex these days it was set up like this you know during the days of privatization that's been a success in as much as there are now twice as many passengers traveling on our network but it's also I think far too fragmented for today's network it's too complicated and we're going to come forward with a, a white paper called the Williams review uh, which will okay. um, put this into a much more stable and long-term state. But for today, yes. I think at least northern passengers uh, and staff know that uh, the government is taking action. So the talk today might be about the change of franchise, but what this really is about is the experience of passengers. And you get virtually any service run by Northern in this part of the country at the moment in rush hour and talk to commuters and you don't have to go very far to find horror stories about delays and being left behind on the platform because there's not enough capacity on the trains. And remember this isn't this part of the country is not like southern England where a commuter train comes in and there's 
there's one along in a few moments' time. That just doesn't happen really in the north of England. Services could be 15, 20, 30, 35 minutes behind each other. So that's why there's so much overcrowding and people feel pressure to get on trains. I've been travelling with a few commuters over the last few days and catching up with them. Early morning at Chapel Town Station in Sheffield. Lots of commuters use this stop. The next service is half an hour behind this one, so everyone has to squeeze on. This is normal, and people are fed up with Northern, who operate these services. Today this is actually fairly roomy, but usually, you, you know, you, I even don't get on because it's, it's too busy. Um, and I've had, I've had to wait for the next train and sometimes even the train after that. At one point we'd, we had a game with, uh, with the Northern Rail Twitter account which was how many people can we fit into your toilet, which is eight if you want to know. Eight people can fit in the, t in the toilet. Because that's the only space that was left on yeah, the train. and we left people at the platform. Overcrowding, cancellations and delays are an everyday occurrence. But some passengers aren't sure what difference Northern losing its franchise will make. Well, it's hard to say because it's still a problem in terms of infrastructure. Would the new franchise have enough trains, have enough capacity on there, or would it be just like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic? We've got conductors on the train who sort of get uh, verbal abuse from customers as well, which I've seen in the past, which is not fair on them. They're here to do a job. It's not their fault that the capacity is not enough. Just over a year ago, I travelled to work with Vanessa Bremner. She's another commuter on Northern. Her route is Doncaster to Leeds. At least it was, because now she's given up and uses the car. I know numerous people who have had to stop um, taking the train, have started driving. You know, Leeds City Council's talking about congestion charges. We're all focused on climate change and the environment. They're all being forced into the vehicles. Those that are still using the trains, even this morning, at least five members of my team came in late because of delays on the trains. Those campaigning for investment in the north say extra platforms are needed in Leeds and Manchester to increase capacity. Stripping Northern of its franchise is not a game changer. The challenges and issues on Northern are not really related to the company who runs the franchise. They're to do with the failure to build infrastructure here in West Yorkshire and across the Pennines in uh, Manchester. Few will mourn the end of Northern's tenure, but passengers are not naive. They know a change in operator will not necessarily fix the problem. They're looking to the government for a proper solution in Northern England. Well, Arriva says they understand the decision. They do, Simon. They've released a statement in the last half an hour or so. They say the scale of the challenges we faced outside of our direct control were unprecedented. We recognise overall service improvements have not come quickly enough. Passengers deserve better. For that, we wholeheartedly apologise. And just to explain that a bit more, when they say that they face challenges outside their direct control, well, when they took over the franchise, they took over under the impression that certain routes like the Bolton line out from Manchester would be electrified sooner than it was. And that would have freed up older rolling stock, diesel rolling stock, to come across to the other side of the Pennines, and so they could put new electric trains on that route. That electrification was delayed, so the rollout of new trains slowed down, and so their sort of service commitments, um, saying what they wanted to do and what their plans were, were all put on hold. Then they had to train drivers. That took people out of the system that would normally be driving trains in rush hour. And as one person said to me, it led to a perfect storm of problems for Northern, uh, Northern as, as an operating company. Um, ironically, things are arguably getting better in the last few months, but not good enough. And it was just too late, really, to save this franchise. People caught in the middle of this, of course, are the passengers, but so too are staff, Danny. What reaction from them? Yeah, I've been talking to a few of them. Unsurprisingly, most of them don't want to go on the record or, or will speak to me on condition of anonymity. Uh, one uh, has sent me a message saying that the things that Northern have actually have control over are starting to improve. It is slowly getting better. Most, not all, but most of the problems suffered by Northern and TransPennine Express, the other operator up here, have been caused by external factors out of their control. Said the timetable fiasco, late delivery of new trains, which caused the backlog of crew training, 
signal failures, point failures, trespasses, road vehicles crashing into bridges, all these things cause northern services on a daily basis to be late or to be cancelled uh, and that is beyond the control of the train company but it really doesn't make any difference it's, it's a problem that passengers have just had to get used to over the last year and a half or so uh, and the government has, has had to step in and I would imagine Simon that there are a few rail managers whose job it will be to run this franchise from March the 1st that may have a few sleepless nights because it'll be the same trains the same staff the same rolling stock really that will be running these services as of March the first with the same problems that Northern have at the moment where they might get a, a train stuck behind a Trans Pennine service that's running late and that slows everything down. It will take time to solve the problems for trains in Northern England and, and I don't know how much time commuters and passengers and everybody else will give the government to solve that problem before they start complaining again. Simon. Danny, thank you very much. In Leeds there. Let's get more now to the reaction to that announcement that the struggling rail operator Northern is to lose its franchise and will be nationalised in March. The service, which is run by Arriva, has been accused of allowing unacceptable delays across its network. Well, David Sidebottom is director at the Independent Watchdog Transport Focus. And is this, was this the inevitable conclusion? I think it was. I think passengers had lost trust, politicians had lost trust, and I think once that happens, change had to happen. And it's about now restoring a reliable railway for passengers who make journeys right across the north. Uh, change is one thing, but it does, doesn't necessarily mean things will get better, does it? No, it's been, it's been refreshing to see the Secretary of State and all the senior politicians today re recognising the fact that this won't be fixed overnight. There's no silver bullet for this. If it had been easy, it would have been fixed two, three, four years ago. It's going to take time, it's going to take investment and, and a committed plan that passengers need to see will be delivered on the ground for them in terms of more reliable uh, punctual services. When the history is written of this particular episode, where did it go wrong? Um, I think it's about overcommitment. I think um, Arriva bid on a very strong um, case for re uh, renewing the railway in the north, new trains. Some of those are coming through now. The Department of Transport, the government accepted that bid, but between Network Rail, the government and, and Northern, they haven't delivered the joined up plan together. That's what needs to happen now, a joined up plan that will deliver better services for passengers. Just wondering, as far as the passengers are concerned, whether public ownership will mean any significant change very quickly. It won't, will it? No, it won't. I mean, I mean, from the 1st of March, there'll be a new name over the door and there will be, you know, perhaps a different uniform or a badge to wear. I don't know. And I'm not being flippant when I say that. That's the reality of this because this will take a lot of hard work to fix. Um, it'll make some hard decisions about some timetable changes. Perhaps you have to thin out some services to make them more reliable, particularly those running through the core of Manchester. And that's where the investment's needed, making sure that the promises of three, four, five years ago about revolutionising the railway in the north are now seen through and delivered. What does this say about the entire franchise system? Um, I think it's a busted flush. I think this government has recognised that we'll soon hopefully see the Williams Review published, which will talk about um, a different sort of centralised railway. We'll wait to see the details of that. But effectively, if train operators can't make money out of this and the government's not getting the, the pats on the back for all its investment, passengers want to see a new railway delivered. And I think it's about uh, delivering that now soon for passengers. I don't know. If someone had said to you a few years ago, a Conservative government would be renationalising part of the railway, what would you have said? Um, probably wouldn't believe it, but you know, I think what, what they've done is listen to passengers, listen to the devolved powers in the north, the metro mayors like Andy Burnham and Steve Rotherham, and actually as a unified voice is actually putting this right now. This is not to reflect on the individual efforts of anyone at Northern, it's just not worked and I think it's time for a change. David, David Sidebottom, good to talk to you. Thanks very much for your time this afternoon. Get more now on the news that the struggling rail operator Northern is to lose its franchise. It'll be nationalised in March. We'll respond to the government's decision. The managing director of Arriva, which owns Northern, Chris Birchall, has said it's clear, however, that largely because of external factors, the franchise plan had become undeliverable. A new plan is needed that will secure the future for Northern train services. As such, we understand the government's decision today. Well, let's get more on that decision. Joining me now is Andy MacDonald, who's the Shadow Transport Secretary. Thank you for joining us. It's the right decision, isn't it? Oh, most certainly. And um, it vindicates what I've been saying for many years now, and many of my Labour colleagues, that this uh, Northern service had fallen into disrepute, and it ought to have been brought back into public ownership. Uh, so I'm pleased that the step has been taken. Uh, and I just would encourage Grant Shapps, now that he seems to accept 
the premise of Labour's nationalisation programme to continue with it and make sure that all of those franchises uh, that are failing uh, come back within public ownership at the earliest possible opportunity. It, if we can run bullet. our own railways, we don't need uh, the German state rail operator to run it for us. No, but, but there, there is no magic bullet here. Nationalisation that in itself, per se, is not going to solve this problem, is it? No, it's going to need money. You're quite right, uh, Simon, because uh, staff uh, accommodation and conditions are absolutely woeful. Uh, there's overcrowding. Uh, there's investment needed uh, uh, throughout the railway. And I think uh, getting a private operator out of the way, it makes sight of what is necessary uh, much more visible and now can be put into a place if the right plan is, is actually produced. And I look to people like Robin Gisby, who's the uh, head of the operator of Last Resort, to come up with those proposals and to secure the backing from government that the northern passengers uh, really need because they've had years of misery on these uh, lines. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that there's the potential of that coming to an end now. Passengers have lost trust in Northern. What makes you think that they have any more trust in, well, frankly, politicians running railways? Well, you should never have politicians running railways, and I've never advocated politicians should run railways. I've said that what we should do is bring the track and train together in one arm's length company, uh, uh, separate from the Department for Transport, and that's what I would have done. Uh, and I would have also brought about a 33% reduction in rail fares by migrating monies from other budgets. So I don't want uh, politicians to ever run railways. But what I do want is for uh, local areas to have a, a real say in their services. And we look at the north of England, a population of 16 million people or thereabouts, and with ridership reducing, we want to see that patronage increase. And it's important that local people have their say through the re their, their, their respective bodies to deliver the services that they and their communities and their economy need. And that's been lacking. But I hope that serious consideration will be given to adopting that sort of approach right throughout the country, not just for the Northern franchise. That, that's in the long term. If it's Northern today, though, who do you think it should be tomorrow? Well, there are others. I mean, it would be a, a little bit disrespectful for me to start listing them, but it's, it's well known that there are other um, uh, franchises in difficulties, uh, and I think we'll see uh, this repeated as a format over the coming months and years. What I would say is I think it would be much uh, better and more honest if we were to say, look, there's a better way to run the railway. Let's bring track and train together in one single entity with a guiding mind for the railway and let's put an end to this uh, failed, fractured uh, franchise system that the private sector has been uh, trying to run for so many years. It has fallen into disrepair. It simply doesn't work. Public ownership will work. And, I, and I'm delighted that Grant Shapps now appears to be persuaded of that model. Andy McDonald, good to talk to you. Thanks for your time this afternoon. And that's the problem, Danny. There isn't going to be an, a quick fix to this, and, and no one is suggesting otherwise. No, it isn't. And I was talking to a member of Northern staff today about what difference it would make to them. Do they think this will solve the problem? And they don't. They think there are so many issues that affect the train services here in Northern England because cable theft was a problem that often occurs uh, uh, here in West Yorkshire at times. Thieves steal the signalling cables overnight. That causes all sorts of delays in the morning. That's not Northern's fault. If there's a signal failure, that's Northern's fault. If there's trespassers on the railway, that's not their fault. If a Trans Pennine Express service is running slow in front of them, it again, it delays them, and that's beyond their control. And so I don't think there's any magic one that will be waived from the 1st of March that the governments will make a difference for in that, in, that, in that respect. And so what commuters will probably do is give the government some time to sort out the problem, give them a period of grace to make life better for commuters here in Northern England, to get rid of the old pace of trains, to get the new trains that have been promised in place. But if after a few months things aren't improving, people will begin to grumble loudly again. They don't want delay repay, they don't want compensation, they don't want rebates, they want to be able to get to work on time so their bosses are cross with them, and they want to be able to get home on time so their families aren't seething because yet again they're late. That's really only what northern commuters want and northern passengers want. Whether they'll get that, we'll have to wait for a few months, Simon. Danny, it's always good to see you passionate. We will see you later on. Thank you very much, Danny Savage. <laughs>
and the government says that passengers deserve better, but will they get better? The main argument from many people is that there needs to be changes with infrastructure. They are building a new platform here at Leeds Station at the moment called Platform Zero that will help with trains heading over the Pennines, but there's still a bottleneck in Manchester and all those delays can knock back on and cause delays as far back as Scarborough as trains get delayed behind one another along the line. And that's not necessarily Northern's fault. Here's what Grant Shapps, Transport Secretary, had to say today. I've been very concerned about Northern since I became um, Transport Secretary last summer and so I immediately put steps in place to look at the alternatives and issued the formal notices and, and today what's happened is the, the, essentially the Northern franchise has uh, hit the, 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 the buffer, um, they are to be stripped of that franchise and instead it will go to what's called the Office of Last Resort which means that we will take over running this franchise uh, and start to bring in improvements. It's a massive network, 108 million passengers a, a year, over 500 stations, so it's really large, so improvements will take some time, but there are things we'll do straight away. For example, just deep clean the trains to start with and then make sure there's a proper cleaning schedule in place. Uh, improve, for example, those Sunday services where the trains just haven't been running. Immediately get things like that uh, back into place as quickly as possible. And I've actually asked what's called the Office of Last Resort, those are the people who will now run that uh, for me, uh, to come up with a 100-day plan so that within that 100 days they're both making improvements and recommending the way forward to relieve some of this congestion. For example, 30 platforms with extensions to ensure that the overcrowding on some of these services uh, reduces and many other steps that we'll be taking including bringing more trains onto the uh, network, getting rid of those paces and then more trains uh, into next year. So so cleaning trains and improving Sunday services is one thing, but ultimately what passengers want is trains to run on time Monday to Saturday so they can get to work on time and they can get to work or uh, get back home on time. They don't want delay repay, they don't want rebates on their season tickets, they don't want compensation, they just want a train that turns up on time and gets them to and from where they need to go. They, I think Northern passengers will give government a period of grace when they take over the franchise to try and get things right, but if it doesn't start improving within a a few months those complaints will start coming loud and frequent again then. Danny many thanks indeed for that Danny Savage there for us at Leeds railway station. The rail firm Northern is to be nationalized the transport secretary has announced the troubled rail operator will come under government control from the 1st of March after years of major disruption Grant Shapps has ordered bosses of the new public sector operator to come up with a plan to improve the service for passengers. Tom Burridge has travelled across the vast network and has been hearing how an unreliable train service has impacted people's lives. I've had to move house to be closer to uni uh, because the trains are cancelled or are late and I really struggle to get in in time for lectures and stuff. So it's been really hard. You've moved house because of an unreliable train service? Yeah. I've like, moved towns completely. Quite a lot of people, including myself, will end up spending an extra £100-£150 a week sometimes on uh, taxis because the train hasn't come, I need to be in work. So I'm, I'm a head chef at the moment. If I don't get in, people don't eat. Because I use a train for university, so because like, of the delays, like, I get late for lectures and stuff. So I feel like it's better if we drive. I've lived in the South East. There they have fantastic trains. Millions and millions of pounds spent in the north, northwest particularly, they've never had any investment and it's an absolute disgrace. It's all over. This franchise has failed. I've not been on time once to work in four months. It can't get worse, so I'm just, any, any change is good change in my eyes. But nationalising this vast network, which runs from the Humber in the east to places like Blackburn further west, linking communities to cities like Leeds won't change things overnight. The branding might change, but old problems will persist. Ancient infrastructure on a crowded network. It's not going to change immediately because you're going to get the same trains driven by the same crews running on the same track. There's no one party that the blame is attributable to. Number one, Department of Transport, successive governments, because they have failed to invest in the railways in the north for the last 30, 40, 50 years. Northern's parent company said it did what it could. We have been trying to put more services on the network, but the network hasn't kept up. And that has meant the services have become far too unreliable, um, and rightly, a new plan is now needed. 
This isn't just about Northern. This train company, TransPennine Express, has also been losing money and failing its passengers. In parts of the country, the rail franchising system that we've had since the days of privatisation is on its way out. The government wants performance-based contracts instead. So rather than this franchise system, uh, which I think has now run its course, uh, have a system of uh, service contracts for passengers, uh, perhaps over a, long, a longer period of time. And most important of all, uh, they get paid when they actually do their job, when trains turn up on time. At the moment, that is not the system with our network. Whatever the system, whoever's in charge, passengers want basic things. I'm late for everything I do. I'm not going to lie, like one time I just cried because my train was cancelled. <laughs> but it's, just, it's horrible because it just affects Bradley. all your plans. And when you just want to get home from work, it's just the little things like that. When you just want to go home, spend time with your family, you can't even do that. It's, it's a massive impact. Well, the new public company which will run the bulk of services in and out of this station will be called Northern Trains, not Northern. The government's promised to sort out Sunday services. They've been abysmal and get rid of those ancient pacer trains, which, put simply, shouldn't be in service. And on those broader reforms, well, the wholesale nationalisation of Britain's railways isn't on the way, but we are moving towards something which is more similar to a nationalised model. Tina. Tom, thank you very much. That was Tom Burridge reporting. Well, we can now speak to Nigel Harris, the managing editor of Rail Magazine, who joins us via webcam. And Mr Harris, let's pick up on what those passengers want. Are they going to see improvements? Uh, I'm afraid not. Um, not substantially. Um, Tom put his finger nearly on it, and some of your passengers actually did, in that most of the problems that Northern are suffering for, and Northern is not without fault, it has managed it very badly, 75% of the issues are a direct result of government control and government decisions. Um, and that's not going to change. Whoever runs that franchise uh, can't magic infrastructure um, improvements out of midair, nor new trains, nor sort the Sunday working issues. What Grant Shapps has actually nationalised today is the blame and he's going to find out about it pretty soon. So what happens next then? If this isn't the magic bullet to solve everything, surely these decisions will catch up with ministers if what you're saying is true? Well, it is true and it's absolutely the case um, that these decisions will catch up with them because you cannot magic those solutions to those problems out of thin air and they will continue. There will be some tinkering around the edges. Uh, more of the new trains which are a year late will arrive and doubtless they will say that this is because of their involvement. But the reality is most of this is down to government meddling and interference or just simply uh, greed in the franchises in the way that they set them up either with impossible timetables or squeezing too much money out of them. And it is all coming home to roost. Am I not right, though, that Northern took home £83 million in dividends over the last four years? Well, it, yeah, it may well have done, but the profitability on train operating company is about 2% which is a sliver. Now, that sounds like a lot of money, but over four years, that is a pittance. Let's put it another way around. If the government had kept that £83 million, or whatever the sum was, could it have run the passenger network in the north for that money? And the answer is no way. So government control will cost more. Um, Nigel, we hear that TransPennine Express is failing as well. Is it, is it a matter of time, in your view, uh, that this is going to happen to another rail franchise in in the immediate future absolutely it will there are a number of franchises all sharing the bed near as the door um, you know southwest railway is in trouble uh, transpennine is in trouble greater anglia have got issues this is a common problem because of the way the dft has squeezed the railway for money and produced deals which and timetables which are impossible to deliver and let's not forget although northern is as i say is not without fault it was the government that cancelled the infrastructure improvements around manchester which is at the heart of most of the problems here so you've got an undeliverable timetable specified by government over a railway where they've cancelled the infrastructure invest, uh, in investment, that's government, it is impossible to run a railway under those circumstances. So for Grant Shapps to stand there and say, this is unacceptable and I've asked for a plan for improvements in 100 days, is hypocrisy on stilts. Where His government and, so and previous government stand behind 
they, they, they're responsible for a lot of this. No, I, take, I, I think you've made your point, but I, I do, therefore, I'm interested in final thought. The final decision on whether to proceed with HS2 is expected uh, this week. Do you think this decision will feed into that one? Well, the, the two railways feed into each other because you can't have... Um, HS2 without the improvements in, in the north. HS2 has got to be built or our problems like this will get worse. Our existing mainline railways are full and this is the problems you get when you've got a badly set up main line which is not well run and becomes full. So they are very much dependent on each other. Nigel Harris uh, from Rail Magazine, thanks for your time. You're welcome. More now on that news that Northern is to be nationalised. The Transport Secretary has announced the Trouble Rail Company will come under government control from the 1st of March after years of major disruption. Our correspondent Spencer Stokes has been at Leeds Station tonight and gave us the latest. Thousands of commuters have been making their way home this evening, many of them travelling on Northern Rail, which is one of the UK's biggest operators. And a sense of relief from them that finally something has happened, that the owners of the franchise, Arriva, are being moved on, as it were, and as from the 1st of March, the government will take over. That doesn't mean they're going to see immediate change, but they feel at least something is happening. It gives them hope for the future. I was on one of their trains a few days ago. We saw the levels of overcrowding, the frustration amongst the passengers, but interestingly, also amongst the staff. This is my report. A snapshot of early morning rail travel across the north. Half an hour late and just two carriages between Halifax and Hull. Passengers worn down after 18 months of delays, cancellations, strikes and overcrowding. Cancelled all the time, all the time. We've been waiting since quarter past eight this morning and it's now quarter to. Once on board, there are no seats available, so even the train conductor is frustrated. I apologise for this delay, for this uh, overcrowding, which is immense. Um, but I have reported it to them, they're aware of the situation, and they'll probably do nothing about it, but at least I've tried to do my bit. Really, it's ridiculous, and I, I sympathise with you all. Um, you shouldn't have the trains this busy. It's not as if it's an odd occasion, it's, it's a continuous thing that it's, you know, it's a bad service that needs to be improved. Today the government drew a line in the sand, cancelling the franchise. There are bigger, longer term issues as well, uh, but this is a clear signal that we won't put up with commuters not getting trains arriving on time. So what went wrong at Northern? The company won the franchise with a bid to transform rail travel in the north, but it was soon hit by a series of strikes in a row over the role of guards on trains. A big timetable change that increased services didn't work out because track upgrades hadn't finished. New trains designed to reduce overcrowding were delivered late, and that meant old-fashioned paces weren't withdrawn, as promised by December 2019. All that means Northern have failed to attract as many passengers as predicted and revenue is down. So the government takes over. Overall we're nationalised when everything were nationalised so, and it seemed to run better than it does now. I don't think it can be worse so I'm hoping nationalising is at least a start of an improvement to the service definitely. I think uh, if they are taking over it means that they are aware of the problem so they should fix it. Today, Northern blamed external factors for their problems, and the chairman of the new government-owned company admitted it could be two years before passengers see big improvements. It's going to be tough. There's an awful lot to sort out here. It's going to take a year or two to really restore it, but I do think it's, uh, from where it is at the moment, we should start to see some things move on pretty quickly. But another couple of years, possibly, until oh, overall, trains I mean, are turning up on time, etc. Yeah, no, building more infrastructure does take a lot of time. One solution could be to reduce the number of trains that run so they're not fighting for space on crowded tracks. I think it's almost certain that we're going to see trains removed from the timetable because in the major cities, Leeds and Manchester particularly, the infrastructure can't handle the number of trains that are operating. Network Rail's been very clear that the only way forward is to thin out the timetable. The government takes over on March the 1st, but there's every chance we'll see scenes like these for many months to come. The contract will change hands on the 1st of March. That's when Northern Rail stops being a private company and becomes a publicly owned one. And the 6,000 staff will also transfer over, so there will be no jobs lost. Those conductors, those drivers, those back office staff will all move to the new publicly owned Northern Rail. 
Another franchise to watch is Transpennine Express here in the north. Its performance is even worse than Northern's. Only 72% of its trains were running on time today and it's been called in to the DFT for talks about its future. That's our correspondent Spencer Stokes. Well, let's speak to someone who is affected every day by the Northern Service, James Greenhalge, who runs Flamingo's Coffee House in Leeds. And we're very grateful that you've been able to join us, uh, James. And I know you travel every day on this line. Just give us a sense of what that experience is like. Uh, yes, good evening. Um, it's just utterly awful. Every single day we have problems, right from open at the start of the day all the way through to close. Yesterday, for example, my train was cancelled in the morning. My shop had to open late. Last night I wanted to go home. The train was delayed. This morning, first train was delayed. We were packed in like sardines. I had to open the shop late again. This evening, for example, I had an event at my shop called Queer Fiction UK. They came to my shop. Even the artists that were supposed to be coming tonight, they were all delayed. It's delay, delay, delay all the time. And it's really, really really difficult for us businesses uh, to be able to plan around that. I've been speaking to a number of other business owners and managers in the city centre and staff uh, since an interview I did this morning and they're all in the same situation and it's really hitting us hard. It clearly hitting your business hard. Can you also just give me a quick sense of, I mean, how much, do you have a season ticket? How much does that cost you? I have it as direct debit. I think it's about uh, 70 or 80 pounds. Uh, no, it's more than that. I think it's about 100 pounds a month uh, I, I pay for that. And, uh, you know, if, if in my coffee shop, if a customer came in and had a coffee and it wasn't good enough, I'd obviously have to give them their money back. I'd be bending over backwards to make sure they come back. With the rail companies, you get bad service and they say, thank you very much, we'll take your money, see you again tomorrow. Not see, at the same time, but see you tomorrow. <laughs> you have tried to complain then, have you? you, you you've told them how you feel. Oh yeah, we've, we've uh, complained. Uh, I mean, everyone complains, but these kind of, I haven't complained for a long time because nothing happens. Nothing happens at all. You get a generic, we're looking into this, Mr Greenhouse. Thank you very much for your time. We'll make improvements. And that's about it. So how much of a relief is today's announcement? Well, it is a relief in some senses um, that government are taking action. But the question is, why have we been uh, allowed to, why has it been allowed that this has been able to happen for so many years? I mean, there's been, it's obviously uh, got really bad in the last few weeks, but why has this been allowed to happen? And, and it's been just been dither and delay. Uh, I'm not just on about the, the current government ministers, but over years and years and years, there's been underinvestment in infrastructure. There's been problems that have not been solved. You know, we, we're constantly getting people saying oh we've got a problem with the train it needs fixing you know it's in the depot why are they not investing in those depots and getting them fixed why are we not getting things sorted out you know it just isn't good enough um, you know and they're going to be nationalized but let's be honest it's going to be months and months and months before anything happens I hope you get home on time James uh, James Greenhouse thanks so much Thank for you. talking to us thanks Very good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Dan Walker and Louise Minchin. Headlines for you at 6 o'clock this morning. After years of delays and cancellations, a decision is expected today of the future of the Northern Rail franchise. We're at stations across the north of England throughout the morning. Good morning, it's Wednesday the 29th of January. The top story for you this morning, a decision on the future of the north of England's biggest rail operator, Northern, is expected to be made today. The government could nationalise the network after it struggled to provide a reliable service for passengers. Well, throughout the morning, we'll be reporting from stations right across the north for you. Jay McCubbin is at Manchester Piccadilly Station. We've got Danny Hewson, who is in Sheffield. But first of all, let's speak to our reporter, Tim Muffet, who is in Leeds for us this morning. Uh, Tim, good morning to you. Potentially a really significant day for the transport industry right across the north. That's right, yeah, good morning to you. Talk to many commuters here and they'll give you a pretty blunt answer when you ask them what they think of the Northern Rail franchise. There is widespread exasperation over the level of service over the last couple of years and today we're expecting an announcement from the Department of Transport as to the future of this franchise and what that future holds. It could be effectively renationalised, as you say, with the franchise taken away from Arriva, the German-owned company that runs Northern, or it could be given a little more time and maybe run slightly differently with a little bit more input from the government. We're going to have to wait and see. But there is widespread acknowledgement that something needs to be done. Delays, overcrowding, 
and cancellations. It is a joke. Northern is one of the biggest rail franchises in Britain, but it's been in trouble for some time. No more Northern. This lack of service is just not acceptable. This is the 0748 service from Nottingley to Leeds. It's really unreliable. Um, it's late every day. Uh, the Half of them don't turn up. Yeah, some, some days you just can't get on and it's, it's shocking. And like when it comes to summer, people are fainting on the trains as well because it's so overcrowded and hot. This line is on one of the worst performing parts of the northern network. Almost two-thirds of services run late, according to the most recent statistics. Earlier this month, Transport Secretary Grant Chaps warned Northern its service was unacceptable and that it could lose its franchise. A further announcement on Northern's future is believed to be imminent. Trains are frequently late, they're frequently overcrowded, there's cancellations at the last minute, somebody else maybe need, does need a turn to see if they can improve it. It's poor, it is, but will anybody else do any better? God knows. The franchise covers a huge commuter network from the Midlands to Northumberland, from Lancashire to East Yorkshire. More than 100 million journeys were made last year. Northern says many of its problems have been beyond its control, such as delays to the electrification of track. But a new timetable introduction in May 2018 went badly. Since December of that year, only around a half of Northern trains have arrived on time. For many commuters, changes to the way these services are run can't come soon enough. I just find, find that I tend to work from home quite a bit, just to avoid, to avoid the commute. For many commuters, changes to the way these trains are run can't come soon enough. Um, we'll be back with uh, Tim Muffet throughout the morning and also we'll be live in Sheffield and Manchester to hear from commuters there in about 15 minutes time for and you. And do get in touch with us uh, about all of that if you'd like to as well. Uh, it's, uh, services have been described as unacceptable by the government and this morning we're live from across the network, or northern network really, uh, as a decision is expected on whether it will be nationalised today. So our reporter Danny Hewson is at Sheffield Station for us this morning but first though, we're going to speak to Jane McCubbin who's at Manchester Piccadilly and Jane, a morning to you, what, what do pe have people there told you? Well, my goodness, there are 101 million passengers who use this service every year, two and a half thousand services every day. And if you take a camera, as we did, on board a train and say to people, how do you feel about it? My goodness, they're going to vent. As you heard before with Tim, in fact, a customer service satisfaction survey, a huge one yesterday, 28,000 people found that customer satisfaction in this service, Northern, was lower than with any other. This is what happened. This is what people told us as we went on the 517 from here at Manchester Piccadilly to Southport yesterday. We've squeezed on the Northern's Manchester to Southport train from Piccadilly. Well, it's meant to go to Southport. Here's Rachel. You get on the train and then they'll cancel it at Wigan without telling you. I'm two stations after Wigan. And this is Jack. You can, it'll just cancel and you'll be made to leave the train. How's that impacted on you? Um, well, I have a little boy who's two and a lot of the times you don't get to put him to bed. You either got to wait for the next one or you get in a taxi or you get someone to pick you up. And the cost of this kind of service? Well, to Matthew, it's... Over £270 a month for a season ticket, which would be fine if the trains ran or were on time or you could actually get on. Neil's not happy. Just an absolute shambles. Neither Sheila people. I'm a professional complainer, yes. Do they deserve to keep the franchise? Absolutely not. No. Definitely not. Sorry. I mean, if the government can do better, then I'd like to see them do it. What would you like to say to them? <laughs> well, I would. Uh, keep it clean. Well, keep it clean. <laughs> keep it clean. Sheila. Well, to be honest, I would like them to be more reliable and, you know, keep your promise. Don't get Nigel started on Northern's promises. You've actually read the franchise promises. Yep. Document. Yep. Top to bottom. Yeah. It ought to win a Booker Prize for fiction. <laughs> <laughs> It's not really Northern's fault, it's the Department of Transport. So Northern Rail can't store the, the trains. If Nothing they will lose change. The franchise. Nothing will change. And that is the question. Will anything change for Northern today? By Northern Rail. If it does, will anything change for their everyday commute? These are all very good questions, and we'll be speaking to Jane a little bit later. Um, I think she's going to actually get on a train for us and be live, hopefully, reporting from a train later. Um, as promised, let's go to Sheffield Station now. Danny Hewson is there for us this morning. Um, 
What are some of the main issues that people are facing in Yorkshire, Danny? Good morning to you. Good morning. Yes, well, I'm afraid the tale is very similar here in Sheffield. I was talking to commuters yesterday, and they were saying it was the unreliability that was the biggest issue for them. That and the fact some of these stations, they are served by trains which are only two carriages long. And if you're trying to get on commuting to Leeds or Manchester, you need to be at work on time. And that two-carriage train comes along, and you know you're not going to get on that train. That is the difference between getting to work and not getting to work. And they were saying that they talked to their friends in the south of England who say, you know, we have problems with the trains too. And they say yes, but when your train doesn't come, there's probably another one that's going to come along 10, maybe 20 minutes later. For some of the villages on the way to Sheffield, the service I was on yesterday, it could be at least an hour before another train comes along. And only 50% of the trains which Northern operated last month ran on time. So that just gives you an example of how bad things are here. Now, passengers are aware that there are issues with the whole network. They know that there hasn't been the investment. And many of them have said that perhaps Northern could be given another chance. But ultimately, they just want to see change. They want to know when they pay for their ticket that they're going to get what they've paid for. All very good points, Danny. Thank you very much. We'll see uh, Danny and Jane and Tim Muffet, who's in Leeds, a little bit later on yeah. throughout the morning. We're not entirely sure because we've not been informed of the exact time of the announcement. But mm. as soon as it happens, and if it happens in our time, we will bring it to you here on BBC Breakfast. And still to come for you on the programme this morning. Um, 11 minutes past seven. So its service has been described as completely unacceptable. Today the government is expected to announce whether the biggest rail franchise in the north of England will be nationalised or not. Uh, we're going to be speaking to a series of reporters right across the north for you. We've got Danny Hewson, who's at Sheffield train station. Uh, we've got uh, Tim Muffet, who's in Leeds yes. for us today. And actually, Jane McCoven is, is meant to be travelling from uh, Liverpool to Manchester. So hopefully we'll be speaking to Jane a little bit later on throughout the morning as well. And of course, we are in anticipation of an announcement at some stage today, and potentially uh, while we're on air. Um, just so many of you getting in touch. Um, this is Dave. Uh, the train service from Grantham to Nottingham and back is just two carriages. Uh, often at peak times, people can't get on them. It seems our complete train network is a joke. Uh, let's speak to our reporter, Danny Houston, who's actually at Sheffield train station for us this morning. And so many stories of the real hardships that this has caused people. What are people saying there? Yeah, there are about 10 million people that use Sheffield Station every year and honestly the anger and frustration that we've been hearing all morning is absolutely palpable. But also what we've got here is a sense that honestly it doesn't matter what changes are made, services aren't going to improve for a very long time because there's been such underinvestment. The biggest issue for commuters is for those that live in the towns and cities outlying this area, the ones that only have limited services. And of course, if the service is cancelled or short and they can't get on, well, that is a time they can't get to work. I took the 710 from here in Sheffield over to Manchester yesterday and asked commuters what they thought. This train is for Manchester Piccadilly. At first, the journey is quiet, even pleasant as dawn breaks over the Hope Valley. I always get a seat going into work because I, I'm starting from quite a long way out from Manchester and at that point there are still seats. Jim, a semi-retired academic, warns me it won't last. By the time we get closer to Manchester, you won't even be able to do this interview because there'll be so many people on the train. This is New Mills Central. There's still 20 minutes to go till we get to Manchester and anyone getting on from here is going to be standing. Romilly. Well, this train's usually like this, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it sort of gets slightly better in the summertime, but usually it's yeah, standing reminded by now. It's normal. Solicitor Emily perches on her bag in the aisle. My monthly pass is over 100 quid a pop, so you'd expect to just get a seat for that, wouldn't you? Really? All agree this is nothing compared to the journey home. If you're trying to get home at rush hour in the evening, and they put a two-carriage train on and you get there a little bit later than ideal, then chances are you may not be able to get on the train. Teacher Ruth isn't certain ditching Northern is the answer. Get rid of Northern. I just think tidy up Northern. 
I go down and visit friends in the south and around London and the train quality there is just so much better. There's so many more carriages and whatnot. Um, up and north, the train system is just so poor compared to what they've got down south. Honestly, those commuters were pretty ground down. They just feel that they have had so many promises, promises that services are going to improve, promises new trains are coming, infrastructure is going to get better, and they just haven't seen the benefit of that. They say that they pay their money and they just can't guarantee that they're going to get to work on time. And they don't feel that whatever happens today will really make an improvement immediately. And that, of course, is what they'd like. Thank you so much for that. Um, we're going to continue talking about that, of course, throughout the morning. But uh, returning to one of our other main stories, which is all about uh, the announcement expected today about the future of Northern, um, the rail provider for much of the north of England. We're joined by the director of Northern Powerhouse Partnership, Henry Murison, who's at Leeds train station for us this morning. Um, Henry, good morning to you. Thank you very much for morning, coming on this morning and speaking to us. Uh, we, we might have a few technical issues, but we'll, we'll hold on to the line as long as we possibly can. Uh, we've heard from so many commuters this morning um, about some of the issues that they're facing. What, for you, are some of the key failings of Northern? I think the challenges for Northern have been that they're not really the masters of their own destiny. The root causes of their issues are the infrastructure that you just heard Danny Houston talking about from Sheffield, and they're the same across the north. So here in Leeds, Platform Zero next to me was supposed to be finished by now. It's not going to be now built until two years late. That should have been taking more trains to places like Harrogate, for instance, that now don't get enough services that they were promised. And over in Manchester, you also see the same issues in the Castlefield Corridor, that because of indecision by the government, various bits of upgraded infrastructure isn't there. And so the services that were promised to commuters when the Northern Rail franchise was first given to Riva just can't be run. And so I think the real challenge is that whoever runs the trains down, I'm not sure without that infrastructure investment that actually things are going to get any better. And in fact, the chaos of bringing in a new management team, etc., could actually make things worse. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really key point, isn't it? Because you can say this hasn't been done, this hasn't been done, and uh, you know, reliability is an issue, and cancellations are an issue. And actual in fact, uh, those running that franchise could probably say, well, there's a huge lack of investment and those things that we were promised we haven't had and therefore we can't deliver the service that we want to. I think that's absolutely right and I think the government's got to take some responsibility because they in the end awarded the franchise to Northern and one person in Whitehall sat in an office promising various bits of infrastructure like longer platforms here at Leeds would be delivered. Northern when they got the franchise went out and bought <clears throat> and committed to buy longer trains to use those platforms and then they got the point where they were supposed to run those services and there's nowhere to put the train because that longer platform just doesn't exist for instance here in Leeds. So I think that what we're hoping to hear from Grant Shapps if there's an announcement today, if they do part nationalise or, or bring back into public ownership uh, this franchise, what they need to do is also promise more new trains to the north because actually all those towns that have now elected Conservative MPs often have pretty shocking rail services and I think that if they were to buy new, more new trains that's what would make a real difference. So better infrastructure which will always take time to deliver but actually if you provide more new trains passengers will notice the improvements and this morning actually we've seen some of the new trains that come into service going to places like Bradford and Chester and so actually some passengers on those routes are seeing more improvement actually than they have done for quite a number of decades on the northern rail network it's only just starting to happen now and the government could decide to buy more new trains but I do worry penny pinching in the treasury who in the end see this as a loss making franchise need to needs to be reconsidered because actually this is about investing in the northern economy when you take our other train franchises like LNER which is also publicly owned and Transpennine they do pay into the government over time and they will make a profit and so just because this is the, the service that actually serves some of the most uh, often disadvantaged communities that provide services that often do need a subsidy to make them able to be run that shouldn't mean that every passenger on northern gets a worse subsidy gets a worse service just because some of the services aren't profit making that to me isn't how public service should be run it's why in the end we need the Williams review reforms which will give our mayors like Andy Burnham and Steve Rotherham as well as leaders in cities like Leeds and Newcastle more control over our trains so we're not left in this position of Whitehall giving us a disgraceful service basically through their own incompetence and a lack of proper accountability from the Secretary of State who needs to 
stand up for the errors of his predecessors okay, and the last Theresa May led government and fix these issues. Henry Murison, thank you very much for that this morning. Um, um, hopefully we could hear uh, Henry's points very clearly. A bit of rattle and hum on the, uh, on the TV line there to, to Leeds. But I think you've got the sort of the main points of what the director of the Northern Powerhouse Partnership was making about some of the, the issues that Northern have had in, in running their franchise this morning. So many things happening today. Um, a decision on the future of the North of England's biggest rail operator, Northern, is expected today. Yeah, the government could nationalise the network after it struggled to provide a reliable service for thousands of passengers. Uh, throughout the morning, we've been talking about it uh, with reporters at stations across the north. Right now, let's go to our reporter Tim Muffet, who's in Leeds, where so many people have been affected by what's been going on. Yeah, good morning, Chelsea. I've spoken to so many commuters over the last few days here, and so many of them say the same thing, that when it comes to the rail franchise run by Northern, well, it simply isn't good enough. And today we are expecting an announcement from the Department of Transport clarifying what's going to happen with this franchise. It's thought it could be effectively re-nationalised and run by the government, or it, they could be given more time, Arriva, the, the German company which runs the Northern franchise. So we're going to have to wait and see. But many people agree that something needs to happen. Delays? Overcrowding and cancellations. It is a joke. Northern is one of the biggest rail franchises in Britain, but it's been in trouble for some time. No this lack of service is just not acceptable. This is the 0748 service from Nottingley to Leeds. It's really unreliable. Um, it's late every day. Uh, the Half of them don't turn up. Yeah, some, some days you just can't get on and it's, it's shocking. And like when it comes to summer, people are fainting on the trains as well because it's so overcrowded and hot. This line is on one of the worst performing parts of the Northern Network. Almost two thirds of services run late, according to the most recent statistics. Earlier this month, Transport Secretary Grant Shapps warned Northern its service was unacceptable and that it could lose its franchise. A further announcement on Northern's future is believed to be imminent. Trains are frequently late, they're frequently overcrowded, there's cancellations at the last minute, somebody else maybe need, does need a turn to see if we can improve it. It's poor, it is, but will anybody else do any better? God knows. The franchise covers a huge commuter network from the Midlands to Northumberland, from Lancashire to East Yorkshire. More than 100 million journeys were made last year. Northern says many of its problems have been beyond its control, such as delays to the electrification of track. But a new timetable introduction in May 2018 went badly. Since December of that year, only around a half of Northern trains have arrived on time. I just find, find that I tend to work from home quite a bit, just to avoid, to avoid the commute. For many commuters, changes to the way these trains are run can't come soon enough. So how could this work? Well, the government could effectively become the operator of last resorts, as it's known. And that's what happened on the East Coast Main Line a couple of years ago. Is it a, a magic wand that's going to make everything great? Well, no. Many people say there are still problems on that line. And that many of the problems faced by Northern are far wider than the actual franchise itself. It's to do with infrastructure. It's to do with a lack of electrification. It's to do with the lack of longer platforms that were promised. So the idea that this can be solved quickly, well, that's not going to happen. We are, though, expecting today, as I say, an announcement from the Department of Transport to clarify the situation because many, many people are exasperated with what's happened here, whatever the reason, and they want something to happen soon. Oh, Tim, thank you very much for that. Thank you. We'll be talking about it again in the next few minutes or so. And thank you for all your comments about uh, travelling by train. A lot of frustrated people out there this morning. Some so. people are saying they're having to change their jobs because of the impact. Precisely, it's yeah. Thank, thank you. you um, we're going to go straight to a train, actually. The rail network, Northern, could be renationalised in the coming days after years of criticism about the performance of the company. Uh, we're live from across the network this morning. Let's and we really mean across the network. Yes. Uh, let's speak to uh, Jay McGovern, who is actually on board one of the services. Now, hopefully, uh, the line survives, Jane, and we can technically speak to you. So, uh, where exactly are you? What train are you on? Well, we've just left Highton outside uh, Liverpool, and we're heading into Liverpool Lime Street, and we're only running at the moment three minutes late and is that pretty decent for this service everybody yes. yes right yes resounding yes not too bad okay hands up anybody in this carriage who is happy with this service okay hands up who's pretty furious about it 
there you go, speaks volumes. Come and have a natter to some of the people on board. A jar and a pay. Um, a pay, you have to use this every single day. How would you describe it? Terrible. Most of the time it's either cancelled or it's delayed and it does make a disruption to my journey a lot of the time, being late to work. Have you got an understanding boss? Not really, no. no. Not the big boss anyway. No. No. I hope he's watching and will sympathise now. Hajar, what about you? How's your experience been? Not good at all. No. Nope. I was late for my first exam <gasps> at university, which stressed me out so much. Got into the exam and I was... I didn't know how to answer. Oh, my goodness. Did you pass? This is the question. I did, but not with the best grade. No. OK, then. Well, the Northern, there's a lot of fury about Northern here. Um, Northern would say it's not entirely their fault because they say that um, some of the... the the problems that they have is about the underspend on infrastructure here in the north and the broken promises from the government to deliver things like electrification. A lot of their trains don't even operate on some of the stations because they're too short in part of the northwest. Um, chat to Cameron now, it's just behind us. Cameron, we're talking to you today because we might hear news about the service being nationalised. What do you think of that? I think it's the right thing to do. Um, personally, I used to live in Switzerland and uh, all the trains are nationalised there clean service, um, all, always on time, so I think it's probably the right thing to do. Okay, then. You'd be in favour of that. Well, we sit and wait. A customer service survey yesterday of 28,000 people across the whole of the UK found that satisfaction in this service was lower than any other in the country. Grant Shap says something needs to be done and we wait for news today. Back to you. As you say, we are waiting, but the train continues and we actually managed to hear from you, so that is good news. Worked a treat, didn't it? Beautiful. Uh, we're also joined uh, by the Metropolitan Mayor for Liverpool, Steve Rotherham. We told you we were right across the network this morning. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Listening to Jane speaking to some commuters on a the train there, we've been in Leeds, we've been in Sheffield this morning as well. There are real issues for so many people trying to get to work and all sorts of other journeys at the moment. Hopefully you can hear me, Steve. I'll ask you again, Steve yep. Rotherham, can you, can you hear us? It's BBC Breakfast here. Yeah, I can. Oh, good, OK. Can, yeah, I'll, ask you. You, I'll ask you that question again. Um, I don't think you heard the, the question. I was saying we were listening to Jane speaking to commuters on the train there. We've been in Sheffield and in Leeds this morning. It's quite clear, isn't it, that so many people trying to get to all sorts of different places are really struggling with transport at the moment, particularly on the trains. Yeah, at a time when we've got a climate emergency and we're trying to attract more people into modal shift, you know, getting people out of cars and onto the trains and actually what uh, Arriva, uh, have, Arriva North have uh, provided is had the opposite effect. Arriva actually claimed that they would have the lowest subsidy and the highest performance and actually the subsidy is one of the highest in the country and the performance, as you've indicated, is the lowest and uh, passengers have been let down for far too long and it seems like the government may well be on the verge of doing something about it but we're waiting for Grand Shaps to actually confirm that the franchise will be taken away from Arriva North. Give us an idea of the sort of impact that an inadequate rail service has on the, the not just infrastructure, business but individuals in, in the north as well. Well like a lot of politicians I've got a post bag that um, people have written to me and to emailed and through Twitter um, saying they've lost jobs, um, they've lost job opportunities because they've missed uh, appointments and interviews. People have not been able to get to uh, hospital appointments and all sorts of different things like family get-togethers. Uh, and it's the, the human cost of this, not just the fact that um, Northern have let people down and are charging them more for a deteriorating service because fares have gone up. It's some of those stories that really mean that the government should have acted earlier and we've been calling for 18 months or more for Northern to be stripped of its franchise um, and we'll see what the announcement today actually provides in some solace, I think, for those people who have been so badly affected. We're getting lots of um, uh, comments and, and emails and messages sent through today from people right across the UK. So it's not just you know, Northern, we're struggling with our rail services as well. Do you think it's fair to single out Northern? Well, it is from my perspective because I, I represent the Liverpool City region and it's, it's my constituents, uh, 1.6 million people, who have been telling me that they wanted myself and um, Andy Burnham in Greater Manchester to act and to, to ensure that the government does carry out um, what it, set, it said it was going to do, which is if 
services didn't improve and performance didn't improve that they would remove the franchise so we've been pushing Grand Shaps um, to do what he said he'd do as a pre-election bribe um, and let's see what happens today but for far too long the people here have had a second class service and I'm not prepared to stand by and just allow the government to say at some stage it's going to get better. Um, we need a quality alternative across the Northern Corridor and that's not being provided by uh, Arriva North. Really appreciate your time uh, this morning. Steve Rotherham, the Metro Mayor for Liverpool City Region, and uh, he, like we, are awaiting for that announcement from the government at some stage, hopefully today. All right, now let's get the news, the travel, and the weather wherever you're watching.